Hello everyone, my name is Liam Sorter. I'm a developer evangelist here at Amazon. And today we're going to be covering how you can implement the Video Skills Kit, or VSK, into your existing Fire TV application. Before we begin, VSK is only available to media and entertainment apps that have both had their content ingested via catalog ingestion and integrated the launcher into their app. We also strongly advise having already integrated the Media Session API to reduce latency when handling transport controls, such as play, pause, and rewind. For more information on integrating these features, check out the links on screen now. Now, what exactly is VSK? Well, the Video Skills Kit integrates more advanced voice capabilities into your app, making it easier for customers to discover content and to have more meaningful interactions via voice. This discovery can be in the form of an explicit voice command, such as watch video name or watch TV show season two, episode four. The magic of discoverability though really kicks in with implicit utterances, such as find genre or search for actor name movies on app name. This is handled by Alexa delivering responses in the form of directives. Now these are just blocks of JSON for you to handle in line with the logic of your own application, giving you full control over exactly how those customer requests are handled. After integrating VSK, there are two key types of interfaces that you'll be working with, search and play and search and display results. We'll get more into how these interfaces work in detail later on, but as the name suggests, the usage of these depends on the context of the customer's request and what you want to play back to them. Now with VSK, you do have a couple of options in terms of how you want to approach the implementation side of things with both an app only integration and a cloud side integration option. Looking at the app only integration side of things, this is handled by routing directives from Alexa to your app via broadcast intents. You'll then have a broadcast receiver in your app to handle each of those intents. For the cloud side integration, those directives are first received by a Lambda function in AWS and then sent to your app via a messaging service, typically Amazon device messaging. Your app then authorizes the incoming message and handles the request. In terms of features, you're not really missing out on anything regardless of the approach that you use, though we do recommend the app only integration approach for most developers as it's both more performant by not having to involve any cloud based components and it's also entirely handled by a native Android code. We're going to be covering the app only integration steps in this video, though if you're interested in the cloud side approach, you can find a link on screen now for a walkthrough and a sample app for you to go through. Before we start looking at the integration process though, let's first look at how VSK actually works. First, a customer is going to give a request to Alexa where it will then be processed in the cloud to map it to a specific type of utterance, where it's then packaged up and bundled into a directive. Alexa then sends that directive to FireOS via the VSK API, where it will then be handled by a service called the VSK agent, which then takes that directive and broadcasts it to an Android intent, containing all of the information from the request. Inside your Android app, you'll have a manifest containing an intent filter and broadcast receiver. The intent filter specifies that your app is listening out for intents from the VSK agent. The broadcast receiver specifies a receiver that can handle the intents. Once the VSK agent broadcasts the directive, your app can handle the event. Now this is where your own custom logic comes in. Inside your broadcast receiver is where you'll write exactly how this directive should be handled. The broadcast receiver will then send back a response to the VSK agent letting it know the directive was handled successfully. And that is a high level overview of VSK. Now that we understand how VSK works, let's take a look at how it's actually implemented. We've created an easy to use sample project based on the app only integration model. It also uses the IMDB catalog so that it can handle almost any request it's prompted with. Though since we don't have access to the content itself, we'll just be getting a random public domain video. Now key to the sample app is that we get visibility on the directive that Alexa pushes to the app. This is where you can head into the code yourself and modify the logic to work with your own app and content. 
To get started, let's open up a command line in a new folder and clone the project from GitHub using git clone and then the following URL. Then we want to boot up Android Studio, select our project and open the app directory. We'll start with changing the package name to one unique to our app. Click on the gear icon on the Android view and untick Compact Middle Packages. Then head to Java and expand down until we get to our company name. From here, right click, refactor and rename. I'm going to go with VSK Test. Then on the bottom here, we're going to hit Do Refactor to make those changes. Then we need to head down to the build.gradle for our app module and then update the package name here to the one we just modified. We'll also then need to head up into build and rebuild the project. Now with that out of the way, let's quickly talk about the types of integration that you can choose from. When implementing VSK, you have the option of both static and dynamic approaches. Which approach you use for a given feature will largely depend on how you want to handle voice capabilities. Specifically, whether the state of the user is relevant, such as being logged in or having an active subscription. Static capabilities are used when all of your content is searchable and playable for free, without the need for subscriptions or any kind of validation for the user's state. Dynamic capabilities are used when your content is not immediately searchable. This doesn't necessarily mean paid content, but could also include any content that the user should be logged in to view. You can also mix the two approaches, giving you the option of allowing both static and dynamic capabilities, such as allowing users to browse content, but to only allow playback if they're signed in or have an active subscription. Starting with static capabilities, we first need to let the VSK agent know that our app can actually support the integration. Open up the Android manifest and add in the following resource inside application. Now notice here that we've referred to a resource that doesn't actually exist yet. So we'll go ahead and create that under the app, resources and raw directory. This static capabilities file will list all the details of the capabilities our app is going to support. From here, we can go and add any of the capabilities that we want to handle. For example, this is how we'd flag being able to handle remote video player capabilities, which includes both search and display results and search and play. For all of the supported capabilities, check out the link on screen now. Finally, under the catalogs property, update the source ID with your partner ID. Moving on to dynamic capabilities, since we're now going to be handling capabilities based on the user state, we need to integrate with the VSK agent to report those capabilities. We recommend doing this by integrating the VSK agent client library. This approach gives us full functionality of the VSK agent, which reduces the need for writing as much code and allows us to use standard Java methods that we can just call, rather than handling the service connection ourselves. This approach also lets us dynamically add or remove capabilities whenever we want, which is a great quality of life feature for anyone looking to advance their user state communication in the future. The two methods that you can use for reporting capabilities are add or update capabilities for configuring which capabilities are supported and send capability test directive, which is a method for testing your integration. Now that we understand dynamic capabilities, let's move on to integrating them into our project. You can follow the link on screen now to download the VSK agent client library. By downloading the client library, you're also agreeing to Amazon's program materials license agreement, which is on screen now. With the legal department happy, we can now add the client library into our project by going to file, new module, and then import jar slash AAR package. After importing the client library, Android Studio will then add it to the settings.gradle file, meaning that we can now select it as a dependency in our build.gradle file. Make sure the reference has been added in settings.gradle and then in our build.gradle file, add a dependency for the client library in the dependencies object. We'll also need to add a permission to our Android manifest, requesting the bind service permission to integrate with the VSK agent. Just copy in the line on screen now. 
The next step is to initialize the client library in your code. We can start by creating an instance of the VSK agent class. Then declare the capabilities that you want to support in the report dynamic capabilities method. You can then report a request with add or update capabilities, making sure that you call this method after the user is logged in. It's also important to note that since we're referencing resources here, if we look inside resources and then raw, each capability is actually already added along with an example JSON object. Finally, you can report your app's dynamic capabilities to the VSK agent by calling the add or update capabilities method, letting the VSK agent know that we're okay to handle those kinds of capabilities. Now to get Fire TV to send intents with elector directives to our app, it needs to go through a broadcast receiver class that we specify. In the sample app, we have an Alexa directive receiver class based on the broadcast receiver. This is where the custom logic goes for how exactly those directives are handled and relayed to the customer. When creating your own broadcast receiver, you'll also need to go over into the manifest and configure the receiver section, swapping out both the class name and matching the intent filter for capabilities you're supporting. For more information on writing your own handler and reacting to directives with custom logic, check out our documentation page on screen now. Now with our project ready to go and test with, we need to first set up our app and configure a security profile with Amazon. Since Android by default automatically signs your app with a default debug key, it won't be accepted by Fire TV for projects incorporating VSK. Both MD5 and SHA-256 values must be associated with an Amazon security profile to run, otherwise you'll likely see an invalid API key error in Logcat. If you already have a custom debug key, make sure you have the key store location and other information on hand. Otherwise, head up to the build tab and select generate sign bundle slash APK. Then select APK and then next. Create a new key and fill in the details as seen on screen. Also make note of the key store's path up above before continuing. Then head over into file, project structure, modules, signing configs, and then add a new config called Fire TV and then populate this with the key store that we just created. With that set, head into the build.gradle file and make sure that there's an object called signing configs with the info of our key store. Then head over to the Gradle side pane and expand into tasks, Android, and then double click on signing report. The Gradle will then read from the key store and show both the MD5 and the SHA-256 values in the bottom pane where we can then copy this in and paste them somewhere safe. Now we need to create the security profile that we're going to bind them to. Start by logging into the developer console and then heading into settings and then security profiles. Create a new profile with the title and description of your project. I'm going to go with VSK tutorial. Now save this and head over to the Android slash Kindle settings, which is where we'll fill in all of that signing information that we noted down earlier. For the API key name, this is just an identifier for your apps among other apps on your profile, so don't worry too much about the name. Once all of that is good to go, hit generate new key and copy the key that we're given to somewhere safe. Even safer. Then head over into the apps and services section and under my apps, either select your existing application or create a new one. Inside the app services tab, will be a section for enabling a security profile. Just expand the option and select the security profile that we've just created. Okay, so we're almost ready to build our signed APK. But before we do that, we need to create a new file in the assets folder called API underscore key.txt and then paste in the API key that we copied down earlier. Then go into the build tab and generate a sign bundle slash APK. Then go into the build tab and generate a sign bundle slash APK. Pick APK and select next, making sure not to generate a debug APK because this will be rejected by the developer console. Now all we need to do is select the V1 jar signature, hit finish and wait for Android Studio to build our signed APK. With the APK built, we now just need to go back into the My Apps section and add a new app. Fill this in with all of your app's information and then upload the release build into the APK files tab. Now just make sure that each section is showing a green check mark and you're good to go. 
Now, while you don't need to submit your app just yet, you will need to enable live app testing. All you need to do is go over to the live app testing tab and create a new test. Head back to the dashboard and click the three little dots and hit submit. From here, you can build and deploy to your Fire TV device and start testing. If it's your first time deploying over ADB, you can check out the video linked on screen now for our tutorial on remote deployment. Before we finish though, there is one extra thing to note about utterances and how they're categorized in debug logs. The two primary types of utterances are implicit and explicit targeting. Implicit targeting is when a command does not specifically reference the content provider or the app name. For example, watch X. This will result in Alexa searching the entire content catalog for any matches. Explicit targeting, however, as you might guess, is when the app name or content provider is explicitly mentioned in the command, such as watch X on app name. There is a small exemption to this in that whenever your app is open in the foreground, the request will assume that the explicit target is your own app as the app name. Though if your app can't support the request, it will default back to the entire catalog. And with that, you are now fully set up for supporting VSK. If you're unsure about any of the aspects of VSK, check out the link on screen now for our documentation page, covering both the app only and cloud side integrations in depth with documented code snippets and a bunch of tips specific to the sample project. If you're building for Fire TV or have any questions, feel free to get in touch with us at firetvdev-eu at amazon.com. Thanks for watching.